so while I was uh, waiting for the 40 uh, the 30 minute mark to come along we're at 38 minutes now uh, 38 minutes to end of boil um, I decided I would uh, put the lid back on just in case because I mean I'm outside and it's blowing a little bit I didn't want anything extra to fall in there like you know a little mosquito flavor or whatever so I uh, put the lid on but um, turned my back for a moment and didn't catch another hot break that came along when the uh, hops decided to crawl up the side of the container a little bit and uh, so I had a little hop explosion which is great maybe I'll rename this beer hop explosion um, with that first batch of hops that went in um, but uh, you know nothing too severe we didn't lose I didn't lose more than maybe a gram of the hops um, overall so I mean I'm not freaking out it wasn't a big deal but oil's still rolling the world is still good and uh, oh damn it I should have known Remember I warned you about that a couple of minutes ago when I was discussing the whole boiling process? Shoot. All right. Nary a moment lost. Phew. Remember to reset your timer if you are using a freaking timed propane burner thing. Damn it. I guess they do that to make sure that you don't accidentally walk away from your beer slash boiled turkey or something. Anyway, crisis averted. Okay, moving on. Uh, that's hops. It's going to suck to... All this hops going to suck to clean, but hey, that's what happens. Six minutes to go. All right, we just hit 30 minutes on the timer. So according to my schedule at 45 and 30, it is time for the remainder of my bittering hops to get into the boil. I'm gonna get all the, all of the, oh crap. Well, there would be my first mistake. I just got the wrong hops in the wrong order. Pays to pay attention. I grabbed the wrong bag. I just threw an entire bag of Willamette in it halfway. So I guess the uh, IBUs are gonna be a little bit out on this one because I just put my Willamettes in way too early. It pays to read your labels and not drink a double IPA while you're brewing. Thing I do. So we just hit 15 minutes. It is now time for, woohoo, what's that? Maple, maple syrup. Now we hit the maple time. And as soon as the maple gets in, I gets, see this. and gets fully included into the, and there's the temperature just changed just a little bit, and yeah. the boil stops. So now I get the maple syrup in. There we go. Uh, 650 grams of maple syrup. I decided to up it at the last minute to just about three quarters of a pound instead of seven, instead of one pound, or pound and a quarter instead of one pound. And this is why you use a container big enough, because when you're fighting a hot break, <laughs> it's nice to have extra room in the pot. Yeah, you if I was close, this would be very bad. But I'm gonna just. Uh, you have about three inches. I'm gonna let it win. The boil will win all by itself. I've only got nine minutes left. This is a, a big world. This is a big thank you from the uh, World Flock tablet. All right, guys. Sorry, I uh, forgot to throw the camera on real quick before I threw the Willamette in, or the last um, sorry ounce of Northern Brewer. We are at uh, the last 60 seconds of the boil. I'm only giving a minute of boil with the uh, Northern Brewers before I turn off the flame. We are about to be done the boil. And I'm going to give it 10 minutes to just soak in the, uh, the aroma hops, um, if that. And uh, then we're going to start the cooling process and get her down to temp and uh, get her strained before we throw it into the, um, into the fermenter. Yeast should be just about done. They've been sitting for about two hours now and I'm using Northern Brewer, or uh, Y Yeast uh, London Ale. And uh, here goes nothing. So I'll be back in a minute. 
All right, so we're in the final 10 minutes now. I've got eight minutes left of a 15 minute cool down period, just as a rest post boil before I get it into the cool and start hammering it. The um, uh, container downstairs is currently siphoning into the bottle, so that'll be done in a moment uh, for the primary. So the primary is nice and clean, sanitized, ready to go. So I'm going to be taking the container in the next seven minutes. Uh, I'm going to be taking it into the kitchen. I'm going to drop it into the sink full of cold water um, and do my best to get it as cold as possible, as quick as possible, so that I can get the yeast pitched sometime in the next half hour. And uh, once the yeast is pitched and the airlock is on, Bob's your uncle, we're done. And the beer is on its way to being beer instead of um, a bucket full of um, really nicely smelling grain stuff. Oh, yeah. Yukon IPA. Double. I believe... Uh, Double Trouble IPA. Not that you can see that very well, but... So this is the fifth sink change. What the hell was that? Oh, that might have been the sink actually going bomb. No, it was a ball. Was it a ball? Oh. Um, go bend. Just so you know, if you leave that ring around the sink, Don't worry, I no. will hurt you. <laughs> My wife would be referring to this ring around the sink, though. Pops and burnt stuff from the container, which is really uh, yes, dear, no problem. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm actually switching from sink to sink, back and forth, so refilling with ice or you know, tap cold tap water. And since we're in Alberta, it's pretty darn cold. So switching back and forth um, as the water in the sink starts to meet the water of the container, right? And the transition is not so fast. Um, you know, it's slowing down for sure. The conversion is slowing down really quick right now. I mean, I meant. Uh, I went from 100 or 200 degrees or 205 when it went in to uh, I'm sitting right around 100, give or take Fahrenheit, so about 40 Celsius. Uh, we're getting real close now to the butter zone, so I'm probably going to switch it one more time, let it rest, and then we'll uh, get ready to pop her into the fermenter. So we're still cooling. Uh, I just grabbed a quick spoon of the wort to see what the wort tastes like. So I mean, this is a quarter of a teaspoon, maybe a teaspoon spoon. I don't know. What's this? Is this a teaspoon spoon? Yes. Less, give Probably or take. Less. Probably less. Um, Color is dark, and I'll tell you, it is some kind of sweet right now. I don't even want to stick a hygrometer in it because I'm afraid of what it'll say. Um, let me. Just, I'm just, Definitely malty. Lots of bitter. This is probably going to come out a little extra bitter over what I thought because of the hop addition error whoops that I made. Smoky, chocolatey, lots of caramel at this point because it's you know still sweet and malt. Um, very, very, very tasty at this point. That could be a very good beer. Almost astringent after the sugar goes though, so we'll see how dry it is <laughs> when the time comes, but maybe your mistake was a savior. We'll still we're maybe my mistake was a savior, we'll see. But so far we're still back and forth in the bath. Or this is a six switch. Or a stroke of genius. I'll tell that to Sam Calgioni at Dogfish when I sell him the recipe for a million dollars. <laughs> Alright, so my beer making area, just in case you're curious, is next to my washer and dryer, which has all my stuff. And then all of a sudden you sort of venture into beer stuff and then pantry. So primary is on the floor. It has been sanitized. It is ready to go. That is fine. I still need to sanitize my airlock, but really I don't need to worry about airlock because um, I use an open top fermenter. Um, there's air leakage all over the place. So putting a top on it is kind of redundant. Uh, next to my fermenter will be some aging homebrew. There you go. Uh, that would be my pale ale from uh, about a month ago. Two boxes, 20-ish bottles down there, and you know, four liters up here. So, um, so basically, all that's going to happen still is uh, my lovely assistant Lindsay is going to uh, come down and help me out. She's going to help me strain um, the remainder through um, because I don't want the hop leaves that were left. The last bit of the Willamettes that were in there are going to get pass through this so whatever it remains in here is going to come out if i feel i need to sweeten it up a little or give it a little more nose i will throw some um 
dry hops in later in the process, but for now, I'm going to strain them uh, through this straining bag, uh, which I will quickly sanitize um, in with spray bottle uh, before we get started. And uh, that's going to be the last piece of the process. So Lynn's going to hold the bag for me while I pour the wort through it. Uh, we're about 80 degrees now. It's been about 25 minutes since I took it off the off of the brew stand so 45 minutes since it was a full boil it's not nearly as quick as i'd like but hey you know what we can't all have wort chillers at our disposal so that's where we're at right now i'm about to pour the word into the fermenter and then i will pitch the yeast uh, and i will be back in a few minutes so i have no idea when this stopped recording it was recording um so at this point i have racked the beer from the brew kettle uh, through strainer into the final topped up the water level to just shy of 100 percent full carboy uh og 1.054 057 was my target not bad uh that's pretty close considering i went from a recipe that i made up and did the calculations with brew toad and hey you know what we're pretty close so i just pitched my Y yeast. Um, I just pitched my my London ale Y yeast. Um, sat for three hours, swelled up like crazy. Just popped it open. Smells fantastic. Um, but I forgot to sanitize the package. Of everything I've done so far, the only thing I think I missed as a step is sanitizing the package. Boil went great. Pre boil went great. Uh, Post boil cooling took a little longer than I'd hoped. But hey, you know what? We can't all have work chillers. Here we are. That's what I got going on post aeration, and I've just pitched the yeast. I'm getting ready to put the lid on and get her up on the table. So that's where I'm at right now, based on a full carboy. Uh, we'll check in tomorrow and see where it's at. But uh, that's it. That's the end of my brew day. Ready to put her on a pad and uh, turn it into beer. Thanks for sticking with me this long. Cheers.